You know, I recently had a bisque firing and uh, I it got it a little bit too hot. So I, I've got some pots that are a little bit um, a little bit over fired from a bisque point of view. And um, here's another one. Occasionally that does happen, doesn't it, that we over fire a kiln. Um, so what do you do? What do you do if you've overfired your bisque? That's a bit of a pain, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you what I do. I, as you can see here, excuse me a minute. Yes, I've got some, now these are actually have already been glazed, these ones. The problem, of course, with bisque, if it gets too hard, it becomes semi-vitrified, doesn't it? Vitrified means that the meltable, fusible parts of the clay body begin to melt, and so the pot begins to shrink, and the pot is no longer so, you know, absorbent. It's a key, key factor, isn't it, that when we glaze the pot that the bisque is absorbent so that when you dip it the glaze is left on the surface of the pot and the water is sucked in into the pot what you can do is is just put your tongue on a bisque pot and you'll feel it you'll feel it you know you'll feel feel it sucking as it were <clears throat> so what i generally do is Pots that are, you can, you can tell that they're 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 too hard, <clears throat> usually by the colour of them, but also by their ring. They have a certain ring. They sound they sound harder, don't they? Here's here's for example here's a pot. This is this is this is a correct correct color you can see the difference this one is quite a lot too hard it's already beginning to look <clears throat> almost like you can see the stoneware color coming through so don't over fire your bisque and I think it's better to have bisque that's a bit on the soft side rather than on the hard side just my personal preference. Anyway, I w I'm in the actual process of um, of firing a bisque, <clears throat> not firing, loading a bisque kiln. So why don't you join me? We can talk about it. Um, as you can see, it looks like it's pretty at the top. Let me just pull back a touch. <clears throat> okay, so. When I'm leaning over the kiln here, I put a, a towel to protect the edge here because this is ceramic fibre that is on, stuck to the top here to make a seal for the lid. But I, every time I'm leaning in, my apron is, is rubbing on here. So you don't want that because it's wearing the fibre away. It's also creating ceramic fibre dust in the air, which you're going to breathe in and which is not a good thing. So put a little towel over the edge. Okay. And that'll just keep things settled. Um, just, uh, just wanted to bring you in on a few, a few things that I'm doing here. Um, yeah. So I've actually got in here that pot, and I only just put it there. You see, it's not really properly placed yet. But I don't know if you can see, but I've got a couple of bottles here which are horizontally lying on the shelf. <clears throat> I tend to take a few risks, I suppose. Uh, it just gives you a topways view there, you can see. Now you might think, well, that's a bit risky, Simon. Well, it is, possibly. The thing is, you see, you have to take a few risks. 
Otherwise, you're never going to know what you can do and what you can't do. And um, so it's surprising, actually, what you can do with, with a bisque firing in terms of placing things how you perhaps, perhaps thought they shouldn't go because they're not the correct way up. You're always sort of thinking, well, all the pots have got to be up the right way up. Well, no, they don't. They can be upside down. They can be on their side, you know. And okay, so so how do we how do we how do we go about that? Well, I just want to show you here these bottles, for example. Um, I'm pretty sure these are going to be okay, but I'm just going to show you what I've done. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but yes, just down there, I've got some silica sand. You see, so the bottle the, the bottle is not lying on just one point of the bottle. Imagine if that silica sand wasn't there, the contact area wouldn't be a, a nice area like the silica sand is there. Um, it would be just touching along a very, a very small point, wouldn't it? That creates pressure. Weight in one point, in one particular point, can create a problem. So it's always better if you can to try to um, spread the load. Whoops. So that, that's, that's the point of that, that sand, you see? So, same on, on that bottle. Carefully put him down. Also, the sand, you see, as you push the bottle down into it, creates creates a slight dip to fit the, the shape of the bottle, the contour of the bottle. That's going to stop the bottle rolling because I don't want the bottle to roll this way. I want it to stay put. Okay, so that's just to show you that. Um, let's just talk about these these bowls over the, over there. <clears throat> These bowls, let's move that. Okay, so the bowl, this bowl is sitting on top of these um, tea bowls. Underneath the tea bowl, in the bottom, in the bottom of this bowl I've got silica sand so this tea bowl is resting in the silica sand that then goes on top like that to give it a bit of height this bowl then is going to rest sit just there on top of the on top of them. Okay, let's talk about these bowls here. Again, these bowls, a little bit of silica sand you see in the bottom there. Down in here, more silica sand. I've got this inverted. You see, I don't have it like that. I've got it like that because this is wide this is this is wider here than that and if you have it wider it broadens broadens the contact area which is again going to spread the load you see it's all about spreading the load <laughs> the silica sand helps Now I could put this one here. <clears throat> something that to something to bear in mind of course all the time is weight. Each time you add another pot you're adding more weight and more weight and more weight. 
So you've got to think of the poor pot that's right at the very bottom. How is he going to stand up with all this weight on top? So think about that. Um, more tea bowls here, another pot inside. We've got to think about also the top of the kiln and whether the lid is going to shut. We don't want to pack the kiln and shut the lid and then crunch. We didn't think to check. So what we need to do, what we need to do is, let's move this back a touch. What we need to do is before you shut the lid, you're going to take a straight edge, all right, and you're going to put it, put him across. Okay, and that's going to allow, I can see I've got clearance, okay, because that is, corresponds to the lid. So if I've got clearance here, I know that I can shut the lid confidently. All right, so, but what about that plate? What about that plate? Now, I had a plate earlier on, on top of those bowls. So, here he is. Well, I could, am I just gonna take this plate and just put him on there like that? Because. He's a bit, he's rocking a bit, isn't he? He doesn't make me feel too good. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go down here. I've got a lump of clay, you see. <clears throat> I'm going to take this clay and make a couple of sausages. Make a couple of sausages. Mix in a bit of silica sand. So I'm mixing in some of this silica sand into the clay body, you see. Now the silica sand, you may say, well Simon, why are you putting silica sand in the clay body? Well the silica sand is going to help the clay be able to cope with, because bear in mind this is wet clay, you see. So it could have a tendency to explode when I light the kiln. So by adding sand into it, I'm, I, this is a, acting as an, an opener to open the clay up and to make it more, give it a bit more um, resistance to blowing up. I'll also put some holes in it. Okay, so look, there we go. I've got a couple of these. So. I don't know if it's strictly necessary to do this for this, what I'm going to do, but it's an opportunity for me to show you something which you can apply yourselves in other situations. Okay, so there, there's the plate. So let's... See, what I want to do is... I don't want this clay too thick, do I? So I'm going to kind of pinch it out a bit to thin it down. Dee 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 dee. So there we have the two pieces of clay. Now if we take the pot, put it on there.
it'll be more secure. All right, but that's not all I'm going to do. I'm going to get a. <clears throat> I'm going to get my um, my pen knife, and I'm just going to. I'm just going to make some impressed holes in it, you see, with my screwdriver here, my star-headed screwdriver, the end of it. You might ask, well, what's that for? Well, when wet clay gets heated, it the, the water in it very quickly turns to steam and it wants to escape. Basically, when you put a hole in like that, you give it a, a, a place where the, ski, the steam can escape. And that will stop the, stop the pot, sorry, not the pot, stop the clay blowing up. Because wet clay in a kiln has, will have a tendency to do that. Duh. <laughs> We don't have to be rocket scientists to work that one out. All right, so I put that there now. Now that is the two bigger pots underneath are carrying this pot. This pot is now fe feeling fairly secure. I'm just wondering if I've got another pot I could put in. So I've got this very, this is a very, um, narrow footed bowl so he fits there okay doesn't he but but i'm thinking well he's got a small foot hasn't he that's going to create pressure in the middle of this pot so in order to spread that pressure spread the load a bit i'm going to put a little bit of i'm going to put a little bit of silica sand there you see You've got to work out, you see, a little bit how to do these things yourself. And you'll find that you'll get, you'll make, you'll, you'll push the limits a bit and you might get some, some, some cracked pots at the end of the, at the end of the bisque firing. Okay, you see the, you see the ring there. That's where, that's where the, 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 the that's where the pot is sitting. The silica sand also lets the heat it go through the sand a bit. What you tend to find is with shapes that are flat, very flat and wide, if you don't allow the heat to get in underneath and for the pot, the plate, if it's a plate, to evenly heat up during a firing, during a bisque firing, what happens is that the outside of the plate here heats up quicker than the inside of the plate down here. The consequence is that it, a crack will go straight from the rim straight to the, to the center. And that's because of uneven heating of the plate during the bisque firing. It creates a tension in the plate, you see. So always try to, you see I can put my hands with this but this one isn't flat, is it, really? This is a, a shallow bowl. But with plates, I generally find plates, you see, you need to stack them in such a way to allow the heat to get in. So the centre of the plate can heat up at the same time as, as the rim here. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. This kiln is just about full. Uh, it's always the temptation, isn't it, to try and squeeze in something else. And um, I don't think I've got anything else at the moment, actually. I think we're pretty much... So there's hopefully a few pointers. Otherwise, you just pack the kiln, you can stack, um, but just be aware of rims um pressure 
thickness of, of walls and um, other than that experiment a little bit for yourselves and for example I've actually I fire plates vertically sometimes and I take a, a little pad of clay like you see me do and, and where the plate touches the, the shelf I put a pad of clay there and put the, the plate vertical just, it's just leaning a little bit maybe, just a little bit and I can put one, two, three and then the top of the plate, on the top here, I take another piece of clay and join them all up with this piece of clay along the top. Again, it, it separates them, lets the air get down in between them. And the pieces of clay on the bottom, they take the weight and because if they, that clay wasn't there, the pressure would be all on that one point, wouldn't it? That one point of the plate where it touched the shelf. So by putting a pad of clay, you spread the load and you're not likely to get cracking. I've, I have successfully done that many times. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. And um, we keep practicing, don't we? <laughs> Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com and check out what's there. And, uh, and stay tuned for the next clip. Bye-bye. Dee 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 dee.